Hello, so I wanted to do a quick review for the chapter six test. So first of all, in Haiku, you'll see that I have linked you to my Pear Deck solutions from the warm up that we did. This is very important. Everything that is on here is very important. You will definitely see all questions of this type on your test. So I would do this Pear Deck again and check it with the answers that I've posted. I would do all of it again and just make sure that you're really clear on it. The other thing that I would go back and practice from 6.5, I think you could just really use the review on some of these U subs. So I would redo questions two, five, six, and 10 without any notes, redo them, make sure that I got them right. I would absolutely recommend that you redo those problems. Okay, so step one, go over the pair deck. Step two, go over these textbook solutions from 6.5. Step three, make sure that you know a question with a revolving. So I haven't practiced one of those in a while. Let's go ahead and just do the region bounded by the curves y equals root 8x and y equals 2x. You will not have a calculator, so you need to know the general shape of these things. The things you need to know the general shape of are y equals x, y equals root x, y equals the cubed root of x, then y equals x squared, and y equals x cubed. Just so you know the general shape of all of those curves, you will be good to go for this test. That's all I need you to know. Okay, so the square root curve in general looks like this. So that's gonna be root 8x, it's just gonna look like that, and y equals 2x of y equals x, it's a line, right? So where do these intersect? Root 8x equals 2x, let's square both sides, so I get 8x equals 2x squared is 4x squared. Bring everything to one side because do not ever divide by x, don't forget that. So we have 4x squared minus 8x because I pulled this 8x over on the side equals zero. I could then factor out a 4x, I'm left with x minus two. So 4x equals zero means x equals zero, x minus two equals zero means x equals two. So my intersection points are zero and Two. I might need to know what this y is later in my problem, so I'm going to figure that out right now. The easiest way to figure that out is just look at one of these two equations. Either one is good. Let's look at y equals 2x, so 2 times 2 is 4. If you had put it into this other equation here, 8 times 2 is 16, and root 16 is also 4, so obviously that works. Okay, so now that we have the two intersection points, let's do, first of all, the area between the two curves. 0 to 2, because that's our x bounds, and top curve minus bottom curve would be root 8x minus 2x dx. If I actually asked you to solve this problem, well, you see here this is a u sub, right? I'm going to just do it on the side because I don't want to mess with changing my bounds in this problem right now. My u is going to be 8x, my du is going to be 8dx, so what I'm trying to do, right, is the integral of root 8x dx. So I don't have an 8dx, but I do have just a dx, so 1 8 du is gonna be equal to dx. So now my problem becomes the integral of root u times 1 8 du. So that's going to be 1 8 integral u to the 1 half du, so 1 8th, the antiderivative, add 1, divide, and so I can simplify that, it's fourths, so 1 12th u to the 3 halves plus c. So now when I go back here, I can replace this with 1 12th, and I need to go back to x's because I'm using x bounds here. So instead of u, I have 8x to the 3 halves. I'm sorry, that was 1 12th, right? 1 12th u to the 3 halves, 1 12th u to the 3 halves, 
minus the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. So now if I put in the 2, I have 16 to the 3 halves minus 2 squared. And then when I put in the 0, I'm going to get 0 minus 0. So that's really nice. So this actually works out pretty nicely. 1 12th, the square root of 16 is 4. So I have 4 cubed minus 4. Four. The way I think about 4 cubed divided by 12, if I was doing this on a test, I think of it as 4 times 4 times 4 over 12 is 4 times 3 because see how easy this problem becomes? Now I see that's 16 thirds minus 4. And actually, you could have just left this answer as your final answer, and that would have been fine. You could also leave this as your final answer. That would be fine. Or we could just go a step further, make it all thirds. So we have 16 minus 4 is equivalent to 12 thirds, right? So my final answer would be 4 thirds. Okay, now let's get into some fun and let's do some volumes with this same region here. In this video here, I'm just going to be setting them up and not solving them. So the first thing is I'm going to revolve about y equals 5. So if I were doing that problem, I cannot recommend strongly enough that you draw these things. So you know the intersection was at 4, 2, so kind of look like that, from the curve to the axis we're revolving around. This one, the axis we're revolving around is on the top, so I go from that down to the curve. So the longer one is the radius outer, that would be 5 because top minus bottom. 5 minus 2x, the radius center. Again, top minus bottom. So that's going to be 5 minus root 8x. So the volume is going to be pi integral from 0 to 2, because these are dx slices. The radius outer, 5 minus 2x squared minus 5 minus root 8x squared dx. And I'm done. That's how I set it up. Now let's do the same thing, except let's revolve around y equals negative 5. Same type of deal, except revolving around negative 5. 2, 4. I'm going from the curve down. I'm going from the curve down. And the radius outer is going to be this root 8x minus a minus 5, right? So plus 5. This right here is going to be my line, which was 2x minus a minus 5, so plus 5. So my volume here is going to be pi, again, from 0 to 2, because those are my bounds. And then I'm doing radius outer minus radius inner. Now let's look at, again, y equals root 8x and y equals 2x. But this time, let's find the volume when we revolve around x equals 5. And then we'll do the same thing and revolve around x equals negative 5. Again, let's draw this picture. 4. If I have x equals 5, that's over here. So now this is going to be y slices. So we're going to go right to left. So that's the smaller line from the curve to the axis we're rotating about, right? So here we have to start at the right. So 5 minus, and we need y slices. So we better put this stuff in terms of y. So that's going to be, let's square both sides, y squared equals 8x, 1 eighth y squared equals x, here, this one's a bit easier, and just one half y is equal to x. The line is going to be 5 minus one half y. Clearly, that's the shorter one, so the radius inner. And then the longer one, which is our radius outer, is going to be 5 minus one eighth y squared. So the volume, now we're going dy slices, so we're going from 0 to 4. We're adding up all those slices from 0 to 4. Pi, integral from 0 to 4, radius outer, minus the radius inner. Now we have to revolve around x equals negative 5. One more drawing here. So 
So now the longer line is going to be with that one half y equation. So the radius outer, we're going from the curve now to that axis we're rotating around. So that's going to be one half y minus a minus five or plus five. And the radius inner is going to be one eighth y squared plus five. So our volume is going to be pi integral from zero, again, dy slices, zero to four, radius outer, one half y plus five squared minus radius inner, one eighth y squared plus five squared dy, and that's our answer. Now that I've done that, I just wanna go through the chapter six test review and tell you it's really important to study for the test and the other things we will come back to and study because these are actual AP problems. Some of them are quite challenging. Also, I'm not letting you use your calculator for the test, so I can't ask you all the different types. Something like number one, you should be able to do. Number two, you should be able to do. Something like number four, I'm not gonna ask you this type of trig. The only trig you need to know for this test is how to take the antiderivative of sine and cosine, that's it. So, you know, number four, five, six, don't worry too much about studying them for this test. Something like number eight, this is a great question to practice, but the hard part about this, you can all probably set it up just fine. The hard part is that this answer choice wasn't actually there, so you had to do some extra manipulation to get to the answer choice. So I think that was the hardest part of that one. Something like number 10, we're definitely gonna have an ellipse, so that could be on the test. Something like number 11 and 12, we'll go over that later, so don't worry about that right now. Something like number 13, we've done a lot of those, and that could be on the test, except that I wouldn't ask you to do a y equals e to the x, because I promised that I'm not asking you to graph that right now. Um, something like 14 would be a good one to study, 15 and 16 also. 17, great one to study. 18, we'll get into that one later. Don't worry about it right now. 19, definitely a good one to study. Don't forget when you're taking an antiderivative, you can never unproduct rule. And so if you can simplify first, which you can in this problem, you need to do that. There'll definitely be something like number 20 or 21. And so on this one, make sure, let me just redo number 20 with you. So on this one, we know that the average value, we're doing it from zero to eight. So that's gonna be one over eight minus zero, integral from zero to eight of f of x dx. And so we don't actually need an equation in this one. What we can say is that this part right here, what does it mean? It means the area under our f of x curve from zero to eight, right? That is simply we add up the semicircle, the triangle, and the rectangle here. Something I constantly see people do is this, which is incorrect, 1 8 integral from 0 to 8, and then they write in that 2 pi plus 4 plus 8 dx. No, this is not right. The integral means the area under the curve. So we're not doing the integral of it, we are doing 2 pi plus 4 plus 8 is this part here, okay? So if you write this, even if you get the right answer, I am going to take off points because it's incorrect, okay? So it's very important that this evaluates to just adding up all the areas under the curve, okay? So sometimes if I give you an equation like I gave you in number 19, you find the integral. But if I give you a picture, you just need to literally find the areas. So that's how you do that problem and number 21. And 23, if you're in the face-to-face -face class, we discuss this in class. If you're in online, we will do that during a group chat. 24 is very important, so let's go ahead and do this problem. When you see something like A, where it says, find the average rate of change, I want you to go back to algebra two in your brain because that's what average rate of change is. Average rate of change is just the slope so literally y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're doing it um, from zero to pi, so the point would be zero, and then our equation is x cosine x squared, and so f of zero is zero. And then our other point is going to be root pi, f of root pi is gonna be root pi, 
cosine of root pi squared, which is just pi, and the cosine of pi, that's over there, the cosine of pi is negative one, so we have negative root pi. You do need to know your sine and cosine stuff for this test, okay? So the slope is just going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is negative one. So part B asks you the average value. So the average value is what we just learned, which is one over B minus A, so root pi minus zero, integral from zero to root pi of f of x dx, so x cosine x squared dx. So this does require u substitution, so I'm not gonna redo this problem, but um, you might want to redo this problem and make sure that you can do this whole thing in its entirety. This is a U sub. I did it on the side. You might try doing the U sub and actually changing the bounds on this one because changing the bounds is quite nice in this one because instead of a root pi, I would have actually a pi. So I'm going to challenge you to redo this problem by actually changing the bounds on this one and leaving the U's and not ever going back to X's and see if you get the same answer. Okay? Then the last part of this problem is a really cool part because it says find the average value of f prime. And so f average is going to be again that one over root pi minus zero integral from zero to root pi of f prime. And FTC, 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 whenever you see the derivative of the antiderivative or the antiderivative of the derivative, you should be shouting in your brain, FTC, 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 right? I don't have to do any work here. Well, I do, but not that much. I don't have to actually take a derivative and then take its antiderivative. We never want to like do something and then undo it in the next step. Whenever you do that, you're like, FTC. All right, so what is the antiderivative of f prime? That's just f of x evaluated between zero and root pi. And so literally, I'm going to have one over root pi, f of root pi minus f of zero. And we've already figured out f of root pi, and we've figured out f of zero before. And so that's all I do, and that's how I get my answer. So that, in a nutshell, is pretty much what's going to be on your test. There will definitely be one like this. Um, there could potentially be one like this. There will definitely be an ellipse problem. There will definitely be, um, like these, the volumes of revolution where we rotate around an axis. There will definitely be one like 6.5, one of those questions that I told you we do to 5, 6, and 10. And there will definitely be something like number 24. If you can do all those problem types, you are good to go. So that's it, and happy studying.